Family Clinic, Healing Families, Restoring Marriages. Welcome to my channel. This is Prophetess Dr. Justina. I welcome you to this family clinic. If you have not followed me on this YouTube, please go and subscribe. Hit the notification button so that you will get every notification when we upload our new videos. And if you have not like, like, share, make sure you are inviting someone. It's an exclusive program that is designed to heal family and restore marriage. Be an evangelist of this family clinic. Shalom. Catch our family clinic every Tuesday, 8 p.m. East African time on this channel. Family clinic. Healing families, restoring man. Dadias, Mashanda ya tale brozi gede baru zata. Father, we thank you for today. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Father. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Thank you for giving us the privilege, the opportunity to fellowship, to share knowledge and understanding. We are so grateful. And I pray that anyone that is tuning in, be it on Facebook, be it maybe on YouTube, may God bless you. And I request that you kindly share 
let people know that we are live also like the video as you watch it so that other people can also see and be able to watch it i bless god for another encounter it is always an exciting moment to come for family clinic because i know that god has value and serious respect in the value of family so it is in the mind of god that we have a successful family life like he has always been god the father the son and the holy spirit and they have not for any reason separate themselves in functionalities and i thank god that today we are going to be talking about something also sensitive and i felt like i have to speak about it after considering so many things and uh, one thing i want to start with is that we are a creature of choice god created us to be able to make choices god created us to be able to have our will and he always respects when our will is submitted for his will to prevail he always wants to see you understand and find a place in your heart to walk with him as your father and accept in him for who he is in your life so god is interested in you submitting your will to match with his principle he gave you that liberty because he is not a manipulative god he is a god who is desiring to see you grow in love submission and understanding so it's my prayer that you will be blessed by this revelation a question that was thrown on sunday during the question and answer section although i have answered it but i felt like i have to go a little bit further to bring a differentiation of the said question i was asked a question about is it okay to marry more than one wife i want to talk about today's topic the advantage and the disadvantage the advantage of marrying one wife and the disadvantage of marrying many wives when you know the advantage and the disadvantage it will help your decision in life god is not going to compel you god is not going to force you like i mentioned if you check in the scripture i didn't see anywhere god forced anyone who married excessively but they also had their repercussion As a matter of fact today we Christian we celebrate the the marriage and the union of Esther with the king but the king was married to Vashti but in God's wisdom the Esther became the chosen one who helped the Israelites to be set free in the time of calamity and events and also if you go through in the bible The Bible also advises us when you look at when the episodes were being wrote by the apostles they advise us also about if you want to ascend into leadership you be a husband of one wife This advice was given also to do what to protect the advantage So today we are going to look at the disadvantage and the advantage and it is my prayer that you will gain a deeper understanding so that you don't do things in pretense god wants you to do things willingly willingly submitting yourself to divine will of god and principles he wants you to follow so i i want us to 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 understand that and i i believe that we are live and we are connected i want to see what is happening and if you have not subscribed maybe this is your first time of joining us if you have not subscribed i want you to quickly subscribe it is important that you subscribe that i may know that for sure you were in our midst subscribe on the facebook like it 
share it let someone know that we are there facebook youtube we are live present so i want you to go there and subscribe if you have not subscribed god created us to make a sensitive decision about our life and our family and one of those major decisions like i earlier said is marriage so today let's look at when you decide to marry one wife as a man what are the advantage you implant in your life and also in the family you are raising because your family is a generation that ought to represent you when you live and go life is a journey how we start it and how we depart from it we definitely impart in whatever we have installed in the people we left behind. That is why we still celebrate our hero pasts. So I want you to pay very close attentively so that you will be able to consider your choices and your decision. I might not go to elaborate in a way that because of time, but I have six advantages to share with you that can help you to take a decision either to take one wife and God will help you as you make that decision. One advantage that you get when you are married to one wife, you reduce evil presence in your life and in your family. When you marry one wife, you reduce evil presence in your life and in your family. Because one wife has no rival. One wife has no fear. The fear that will be in the wife is not in the losing of the husband or the children being left behind with no care. It reduces the presence of rivalry. Rivalry and things that brings a lot of contentions in the family can hinder the success of the family. If you look at today's society, or let's not even talk about today's society, let's go to the scripture because it's a sensitive issue that cut across the whole people. If you look at the story of the scripture, let's take Abraham as, as a case study for this point. You see that the moment he slept with the maid, even at the agreeing, he sat down and agreed with the wife to carry out that very act. The maid was not even consulted, but it happened anyway. The moment that happened, they had an issue. Remember, this same Abraham has hundreds hundreds of people over 300 of people living with him no contention until there was a second side chick that was legalized by the husband and wife to be their own child to bear children for them or to bear a son for Abraham at that time it looked like a solution but in the end, it became a problem. When they stayed for 25 years without a child, we never saw them contend with one another. The Bible recorded that even Sarah was calling Abraham my Lord. That is to tell you how organized and how peaceful they lived even with nothing. No child, but they were successfully married with peace. But contention came in, evil at intention. Rivalry stirred up just by that act of having Haggai to bear a child. So the, the Bible did not explanate the character of Haggai that fooled even Sarah to chase her out of the house. And Abraham never defended her so when you don't want to increase more evil you don't get into many women many women 
as many as they are is how different they are in thought, in understanding, in execution, in relation. So you don't expect your wife, if you choose to marry more than one wife, to behave like manners. They can't. Remember, if we go back to the, 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 the son of Abraham, now let's take it from Jacob. Jacob married two sisters from the same parent. And yet, there was issue in the family. The brothers of Joseph, they were very, they knew. They had clear understanding the situation that brought their mother into that marriage. They knew by intention, Jacob was not ready to get two wives. He wanted just one. But by Laban manipulation, he succeeded in giving him the two daughters because he saw the prosperity anointing in his life. That did not stop the brothers to say this Joseph is our own sibling and it is our mother's younger sister's son. Let us not plan evil against him. It did not stop anything. It rather increased the rivalry. It rather increased the, the evil plot to eliminate him because he became like the loved one and the chosen one. Evil was planted in the family that Jacob suffered for 14 years to get a wife of his own choice. So you must know that you open your family and you open your own door of life to evil when you extend into many women. Some women might look beautiful outside, but spiritually they are maggots. Spiritually they are worms. Spiritually they are pythons. Spiritually they are tigers. They are dry sticks. You go into them, your life ends. So if you want to resist and minimize, reduce, stop bringing extensions. Even if you have that baby out of wedlock and you decide to now marry when you are stable, it does not reduce the evil. Once there is a step there, it is either a step backward or a step forward. It brings a lot of evil. I have never seen a polygamous home where there is no certain kind of, it might not be at the peak, but there is certain kind of evil that reigns there. Because somebody wants to prove that their children are better than the others. So we must look at this advantage. Why do you need to put evil in your family? Why do you need to allow things that can be avoided to exist in your family? So you expose your family to evil. But when you marry one wife, you reduce it to your paterna and their, pat their maternal. You reduce the, the, the effect, the altars. Let me say this. The moment it is more than one, it means you have several altars you have invited to be instituted because all marriages are agreement. Can two work together except there be agreement? The moment you agree to marry that second wife, you have inherited the problem in their family, adding to the one in your family and the first wife you have already married. Now you are going to be fighting how many kingdoms, how many battles. Let's assume in your family you have foundational power. Your first wife, they have witchcraft power. In your second wife, they have marine kingdom. Now look at, you are the center of hell. So you can reduce the impact of evil. The, 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 the demonstration of evil from your family by sticking to one so that that one can be easily twinned together. It can be easily together as one and your battle will be reduced. Also, your children's battle. Number two, advantage of marrying one wife. Your family is more healthy and united when you marry one wife you will have a healthy family that is united unity is a thing that cannot be removed 
in our life. It is something that requires to be in existence in our families. Where children cannot sleep when one is having an issue. So if you have one wife, and maybe that one wife has three children, I think she will be able to coordinate her children to teach them brotherly love, brotherly assistance, supporting one another, defending one another, and also the children will know that whatever that comes in into that family is for them, them, them. Not that outsider which you have gone to produce from somewhere, from east, west, and north, is now going to come suddenly and become what they don't know. You see, some of us, we give our children emotional torture by bringing in an external family into the family. The children's health will be healthy. Consider, most children that go into educational default or they start having um, behaving waywardly it's these are the impacts the disadvantages of having more than one wife is beyond what you can imagine so if you want a healthy family you want a united family you need to stick to one woman one man so that your children can be mentally healthy emotionally healthy they can also be spiritually healthy and it can also help their moral value. If, for instance, you have one wife and she is from, let me say she is from Luo, she will teach, and you too, maybe you are from Luo, definitely you people will teach your children your culture. So she might be good with knowing the cultural value of where she comes from. She might be also be stable-minded to know that in this family, daddy loves mom, moms love dad. The children want to see it. They want to believe that something good is going on between their parents. They want to have that parental security. Children feel so bad when they cannot feel good around their parents. They can't be assured. They don't feel like daddy is home, mommy is home. They don't want to, they can't understand why you can't be together. So we, we actually put our children in a very bad situation when we cannot live a one man and one wife kind of a family. And let me ask, when God created the Adam and Eve, they were one, one, one. So probably God has seen the advantage and he sent it as a picture to encourage us. He sent it as a picture to tell us, though you have choices to make, though you are able to do what you desire, though you can do more than what I require, but know that in my own school of thought, a man and a woman, male and female, he made them. So God also was, is also trying to communicate to us how healthy our family can be if we are pairs. Remember, they became an issue when they had a visitor. When the serpent visited them, their marriage had an issue. So you must be very mindful if you want a healthy family, you want a, unity, a family with unity and one purpose to succeed in life, to succeed academically, to succeed maritally, to succeed in, in, in the things of God, I will always tell you, check on the advantage. Number three, advantage of keeping one wife and one husband. You enjoy true love in the family. You enjoy true love, not, not, not pretense. Not the first one wants money from you. She will pretend, oh, you are the best thing. I'm the one who suffered with you. The second one wants and say, you, told, you promised me east and west. The third one, you know, I'm the last baby in the house. No, you don't need that. You need people who are genuine with you. And one woman who you fell in love with or who you decided by yourself, by your choice among many other women, 
to be your number one. That woman, if you can cultivate a very healthy relationship with her, you can be sure of having a genuine love. It is when you start hopping around, jumping like an antelope from women to women, that you destroy the, whole, the first woman. The true love that you had acquired can be destroyed when you start hopping and looking for many other women. One is enough to show you love that is genuine. This pretense of love in form of eating your money, in form of trying to, 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 to acquire properties from you, taking advantage of your vulnerability, you don't need it. True love can be shown. And it is also a very beautiful thing to see. Oh, we dated in school. From there, we got married. We have been in marriage for 50 years, 30 years. Oh, my goodness. You know, that is such a, a, a sweet story to tell. You make people want to know what is holding you together. How are you able to overcome? Because there are pressures from East and West. But someone else is saying, I know all these pressures are there, but I choose to remain with this one. Because there is genuine love. Your genuine wife, that woman who saw you when they, those people did not see you. You know, there are, there are things I, I, I wouldn't want to go into because of time. Most times the first wife sees you the way you are, ugly. You don't even have your present future. You are looking like you are not going to be anything. But God gives her an eyes of the future to stick with you. And suddenly you have become that future God has brought before her in the past. And you just drop her and go fit in with another woman who cannot withstand your previous life. And by the way, I hardly see many women who is marrying very poor man. It is always very difficult to see second wife, third wife, fourth wife, fifth wife with a village man who has nothing to show. It means those other women, there are some of them with an intention. Majority is with an intention. So you can't get true love from them. But you can get them spend your money with you. You can get them give you leisure as you exchange it with your money. So the satisfaction you think they are giving to you is coming from the investment of cash and provisions that you are giving to them. That's not true love. If you also die or something happened to you, maybe you become sick, you can no longer stand your ground, they will move to the next man available. Very rare time will you see. The, then the first wife becomes the one who cleans the man when he can no longer take care of himself. Men wake up. True love is not, is not in many women. It is a game. True love can be found with a woman who you have built a force together with. From scratch, you have become better than where you first met yourself. You will get true love there. Genuine love. It is sweet to know that someone loves you genuinely, unconditionally, not with any expectation, not with anything, but they just want to be there for you. It is a beautiful thing to have that as an experience. Number four, the advantage of getting one wife, one husband. Your children will be less stressed. Your children will be less stressed when you have only their mother, only their father. Oh my goodness. You save those children from mental stress. Some children cannot withstand your second husband. Some children cannot withstand your first husband, your, your second wife. They might not be able to say it, but now that's their problem. It kills a part of them. It makes them, some cases are beyond some cases can be beyond 
your, your, your control. Those cases where we have issues that are beyond your control is a little bit understanding. But where you have not, you are not in such situation, but you choose to create it yourself, to have more than one. You see, that's where we are talking about. If it is avoidable, it is better. But if your husband walks out on you and decides to divorce you, or your wife walks out on you and decides to divorce you, not because you had any major issue, just because they found someone else they think is better than you, that's when you are faced with a situation. You need to now take your children for counseling and some health therapy. If you decide not to do that, you will kill a part of those children and they will never tell you. So our children suffers. At least me, I'm from a polygamous home. I can assure you I tried my possible best, which I'm still doing until today, to ensure that everybody lives peacefully. But sometimes some people will also make you know that, look, we know that you are our elder sister, but uh, we still have our own father's children. We have our own mother's children. Now you don't have a choice. You must respect that. They do. I remember, let me share a little of my testimony. I pray that time allows me. When I married the first time, after my marriage with my husband, and uh, I, had, I was pregnant, I delivered, I was faced with a situation. My mother is there. My stepmother is there. My stepsisters, I grew up with them with my stepmother. I, and my mother also has the right by tradition, by being my biological mother to come and nurse me because I have just put to birth. And I'm faced with a situation, how will my stepmother feel? I've been with her in the house, sure. But I know that there is no time I will deny my mother also her rights. I was torn apart. My stress became so much. I didn't know what else to do. I remember I had to speak with my, my stepsister, telling her, look, my dear, you can judge me for inviting my mom, but I know that when you will have your own children, you won't think of my own mom. So I believe that let me invite my mom. When you also have this opportunity, you invite your mom. You see, we have to go through that because of the decision of our parents. We weren't there, but life must make us to now force ourselves to make a decision. And do you know what else I did? So that my mother will not feel left out, my stepmother will not feel left out, I took my stepmother's child, I took my mother's child. The two of them came into our house to live, newly coupled. And you can imagine, now who do you protect? Is it your mother's last born or your, your stepmother's last born? Do you even have the money to cater for the two of them at that time? Now my stepmother's child gives her mother information, today is good. My mother's own give my mother information, your daughter is doing well. You get to see those things and you are like, oh my God, where do I run to? These are stress that your decision of yesterday put in the life of our children. When I was also getting married, I was asking, how do I give them the uniform? My parent has to wear uniform. Do I give my mother and my stepmother the same uniform to wear? Will my mother say I am legalizing my father's second wife? Will my, sec my stepmother say I am neglecting her for my mother? Who will my father wear their uniform with? I was accused of not buying uniform. I deliberately told them, my dear, wear what you have. You won't put me in the middle. I wasn't there when you people make your decision. I cannot be your victim. I looked at the three of them. I said, my dear, wear what you have. Whatever you wear is good. I will not be a victim in, the, in between. I'm just listing. These are much more stress. Much more stress that we go through. Probably this is the first time I'm saying this. I'm saying it loud. 
These are things that went through my mind. I have to fight it. I have to decide it. I have to know how to deal with it. Your children are seriously in stress when you engage. So if you want to reduce their stress and make them to be children and grow in, in, in mental health and emotional stability, please, it is an advantage for you to have one wife. I pray that time will allow me. Number five, advantage of having one wife, you have peace. Peace is restored. One wife will give you a lot of peace, especially if you marry a good wife. She will give you peace. And that peace will help you to plan your life and their own future to a greater height. Who doesn't want peace? Everyone is interested in having peace. So I encourage you, if you want peace that can give you good health, that can give you sense of reasoning and time to, to reflect, you need to have peace. Choose wisely. Number six, advantage of having one wife. You are respected by the society. When you have one wife and you have lived with her or him for a long time of your, your marriage, you, get, you gain respect from the society. The young ones want to know, what did you do? How did you make it? How have you persevered? Because we all know that there are issues in marriages. But in those issues, we ought to stay. Remember Adam and Eve, they lived for more than hundreds of years. And they were still together. Our own, we are even staying 100 years, 120 years, very rare. And yet the marriage is so tiresome. So when you see a couple who has tarried for a long time, they might have scars, they might have stories, they might have issues and events, but they still sojourn together. Those are heroes of the society. They are valued, they are referenced, they are also given position to advise those who are coming behind them. So it gives you society respect, recognition, and also tells that you have the grace to persevere. You have the grace to, to, to tolerate. You have the grace to forgive and to understand one another. So these are some of the advantage that is actually very, very vital to our destiny, to our journey of life, to our family, and it is a decision that is personal to you. So I pray you will put it to practice. Now let's look at the disadvantage because of time. The disadvantage of having many wives. When you have many wives, the first thing you are doing, you begin to live a fake life. Your life will no longer be as it used to be. Because you have to fit in in everybody's life even when you don't want to. You have to come to your first wife and tell him, tell her, you know, you are the best thing that has happened to me. You go to the second one and say, thank God I met you. You go to the third one and say, you are the apple of my eyes. Now you are no longer original. You are fake. You don't have authenticity anymore. You just say it for the saying sake and for the sex you want. It doesn't, even then they will wonder, if I am the apple of your eyes, how come you are going elsewhere? Eyes don't travel, they remain there in their position. If I am the thank God for me, why are you moving east and west? It is very traumatizing that you are with a woman, you are just in that room just the other day. How do you even sleep? You have lost your personality, you are no longer you. You have become someone else that even you, you don't know. How do you look at the three of them and how do you feel? How do you, because we know the way we are created, we are not created 
to be everywhere at every time. And we also know that Jesus himself said, you cannot serve two masters at the same time. You can only serve one genuinely and fake the other one. So when you choose to have many wives, these women have just, they don't understand. They are being joked with. Because you cannot love all of them at the same time. It's a lie. You will begin to have interest. Maybe you will love that one because her breast is big. The other one because she has a very beautiful face. The other one because she is tall. You really mean you are liking people by objectives? It doesn't make sense. You lose your life. You become a fake person. Very fake. And your children will be looking at you like, ah, daddy is not good. Because daddy comes on Monday to eat from mommy. And on Tuesday, daddy is in another mommy's house. And on Thursday, daddy is another mommy's house. How do these children look at you? Daddy is not real. Daddy is bad. They will be having a mind of torture. They can't understand it. Don't ever think you are enjoying. You are deceiving your own self on earth. You are deceiving your own self. You are deceiving your mind. You have decided to deny yourself of who you are and become a gangster of women or become something different that can't be even interpreted by man's understanding because you have to live a life of lies. And you see those women, they, see, they say, my husband said I'm the one he loves. That's why he eats my food every day. Same thing he told the other one before he met you. You see? It's just a story. It continues. Number two, disadvantage of having many wives. You expose yourself to evil. Any man with many wives, you are under serious, severe, severe attack. Under severe attack. If your first wife, for instance, is a Christian, maybe a good Christian, lucky for you, she will kneel down to pray for you. If your second wife is a herbalist, she goes to herbalist to get concussion to help you love her more, you will be eating that concussion like food. If you also have another one who is into things, look at your life, you are already under attack. People are pointing at you day and night. People are, you are being searched for. It is no prestige. Most of the people who had more than one wife in the Bible, they lost something in their life. So you must be very wise. If you want to kill yourself very fast, engage in many wives. If you want to live a life without yourself, Self, you don't have yourself, you don't have the originality of you engage in many wives. Because that, that place, they will really, really drag you from east, west, north to south. You will be moving like a rotating ball. Because everyone wants you and everyone must get you. And whatever it takes, they will prove the point. So you stay under severe attack. Your money, your property, everything is always under severe attack. Watching, it's like you, you have enemies living with you as their chief assignment. May God help our understanding. Number three, you inflict pain on your children. If you dare die without a will, Oh my goodness. The children suffers. It could even, even be the second wife's children is the one that will suffer or the third wife or even the first one. They suffer. The same money you had worked all your life to make your families to have peace, to have joy, to give them a better future will be squandered by those who have more power and authority to claim property because you are so careless to have many wives and not careful enough to sit down 
to write your will. So you leave your, even with that will, you are dead, they are contending with your dead will. Imagine, they are going to court year to year, saying my father did not, cannot, my father cannot, my father cannot. Your father cannot, and before your eye, your father did. Brought another woman, a woman, a woman, a woman. You leave your children in agony. Some of the part of the children will be enjoying living in a very beautiful house. Probably you built it. Or they will have good cars, going to good schools. Why some other part of the children are shokoras on the streets? Nobody to talk to them. They are miserable. But these are your seeds. Because you never, you never. Or maybe they offended you or something happened. You decided to invent anger, forgetting that if you die, your responsibility. The Bible says a good father leaveth inheritance for his children. But you, when you die without a proper will, you leave pain for your children. Even with a proper will, if you have a contending wives, they will be in court even before your, your dead body is rotted. It is very painful. And shameful that your children can start to fix on one another because of your own self decision that you didn't consider the consequences of them. May God help us. Number four, you end up missing God's relationship. You end up missing the relationship you have with God because you are always distracted, frustrated. In life. And what is it in life if you don't have God with you? It's as if you are building in marriage. Look at Ahab. He built in marriage. He never made it. Solomon never made it to translate. Nobody did we see that God promised Solomon, this one will take over you. Look at Ishmael. Till today is fighting. So you must be very wise. Be very wise. Careful. Very wise. In your decision to have many wives. Because it can take you from God. If your wife is not godly, she will introduce you to her own gods. Because you will definitely have problem in life. The Christian will tell you, let's pray. The one who is with witch doctor will tell you, let's go to witch doctor. The one who is with other powers will take you there. They are all helping you to get what? Solution. In helping you to get solution, you compromise your faith in God. And you fall into temptation that can hinder your relationship with God. May God help us. Number five. Disadvantage of marrying seven many wives. You live a confused life. You are always confused. Because these women will always give you problem. And you ask yourself, now what is it? I have bought house. I have given you this. I have given you that. Why can't you people allow me to have peace? Peace. Where did you see? You sold it. The moment you choose more than one, you sold it. The moment you choose to have many, many, many of them, you sold your peace. Your, your body is already inhabiting in so many women. You can't have peace. Torment is your portion once you have more than one wife. Because you will never understand them. You will never be enough for them. You will never satisfy all of them. There will always be one of them who feels neglected, who feels abandoned, who feels not given time, what will you do than to live confused, running from east to west, post to post, within the three of them? May God help us. Number six, disadvantage of having many wives or husband. Satanic kingdom can easily destroy you. Satanic kingdom can easily destroy you when you have so many loopholes. Once you have so many loopholes, they will have the, the, the power to, to, to attack you, to destroy your family. 
because of the loopholes. So you must ask yourself, are you ready to be exposed? Are you ready to be exposed? Are you ready to be exposed? Are you ready to be that person who is going to go through all those situations? Are you ready? If you are not ready to be exposed to satanic kingdom, to start laying eggs, building altars, because one thing that happens in polygamy, exchange of bad words, people really speak. So the more they speak and utter those utterances, curses, confrontationals, what happens? The enemy sow a seed on them. The enemy plants. I, I don't know if we have questions. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can connect to get questions. If there are questions, if there are questions, Makato Libra Zegi de Baru Zatana. Ribo Zegi de Baru Zataya. I'm trying to see. I can't find it. Hmm? I'm not even able to get it. Let me see. I'm not seeing any blank okay your question is important Katayabarozegede Mashada barabu zege de gede. Masata ya da baraba zege de baru zataya. I'm seeing a question here. In the case where you found yourself in that legacy of polygamy family set by your father, what can you do to unite your siblings? <laughs> it's almost very difficult. Uniting them is almost very difficult because of the seed each parent must have planted in the life of the children. If their mother has told the children that your mother's children are evil, every time you come close to them, they only see evil. They can't believe you are coming close to them for a good intention. They think you want to know about them and just use it to fight them. So if the wives have installed fear and have spoken things that is not healthy before you became mature, the children tend to believe their mother and continue with that narrative. So if you want to change them, except maybe God blessed you with money, and you want to extend kindness to them. And sometimes that kindness can be misinterpreted, like you are trying to show off if they have been damaged by their minds to their parents. So it is always very difficult. And what I can also say, if you have gone through polygamy and it is possible for you to resist it yourself, because of the way you have gone, what you have gone through, it is very good. 
if we can fight it by refusing it, if possible, except when it is beyond your control. Maybe your husband choose to run away or your wife choose to run away. Then at that time, these are events that are beyond your control. You didn't plan, but it happens. But if those events can be avoided and it isn't there, never open a door for a such kind of polygamy to repeat itself after you have gone through it. So you must be very sensitive. So there is no way to change the siblings. It is only the hand of God that can save you to protect yourself and to have a unity that we can have common agreement. If we want to paint the family house, we all contribute money to do it because it's our family house. If we want to do maybe a function, we contribute as family to do the function. But for your stepsister to love you so much that they love their own blood sister with the same mother, the same father, <laughs> you need Jesus for that to happen. You need, even if that girl or that guy choose to love you, others will tell the girl that she or he has been bewitched. For me, I felt like there is nothing to do than to allow everybody to be mature. That's how I did mine. I, I respect everyone. If you say you are traveling, if you say you are sitting down and you have what it takes to achieve what you want, I will give you the support at my disposal. I am not expecting you to love me more. I had to deal with that. I don't expect you to love me more than your biological mother, sister, or brother. I don't. I don't expect you to find me more interesting. No. I don't expect you to, to, to take me to be somebody special. I don't. I lived above it. I told myself I will be Justina and I will support anyone that I am able to support. So don't try. If you push too hard, you will be given a name and you will be surprised. You can be more hot than the hot that has already established by the unions. So wisdom is profitable in that direction. The top chart has gone blank. Okay, yeah. If you had asked questions, I think uh, it can be reposted or something. Okay, thank you. Hi, Mama. Can somebody be married both physically and spiritually, but different spouse and... Mm. Yes. Okay, when, when, when I say yes... There are situations whereby you are dedicated to a family. And that family, maybe they practice a kind of uh, 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 an, an altar. In that altar, every child they dedicate in those altars are exposed to the familiar spirit. The familiar spirit will become or a, a water spirit or a deity. It will become a husband or wife to anyone which is born in that family or which is brought. If they bring you to that altar, automatically there is a union, the altar will begin to guide you. So spiritually, you are married to that deity. You are married to that entity that is being worshipped and dedicated to in your family. So that can be a spiritual thing in your life that can hinder your physical progress. Because there are some deities that are very angry, very destructive, very uncontrolling, and maybe you don't even know about it. And this deity keep laying a legal ground of marriage without your concept. Because maybe you were young, when it was done, it is not superstition. It is reality. It happens, especially in Africa, whereby we don't know most of the things that our parents were doing. So when that happens, one of the things you notice is that you struggle in your relationship a lot. When your relationship is about to yield a better fruit, it, it just dries up. Why? Because the one behind the scene is trying to make sure that you don't achieve that physically. 
and they can really manipulate your physical wife to be a thorn in your flesh until you keep keeping out of that person to remain with them. Remember, you are the one who does not see. The spirit sees you, possesses you, owns you, and lay claims of you. You are only the one who is not seeing. And most times, you actually see, they visit you in the dream. That visitation whereby you keep seeing a continuous face, a continuous face, having sex with you. What do you think it was? It is an exposure to such kind of things. So we must be very careful. Uh, mama is someone, mama in some cases, a woman can marry a man only to later know that he had other family that he did not tell her about. In such case, can she divorce the man? Yes. That marriage was built on pretense. It was not truthful. You can use that fact to choose to divorce or to choose to forgive. It is now you to make that decision. If you are going to, if you already have children, you have to come up with how do you tell your children that their father is no longer going to be there based on ABCD. Also, it is very difficult for you to continue lying down with a man who has really, really lied to you. You will need a psychologist. You will need a mental therapy. You will need spiritual maturity to do that. Because once there is a bridge, the trust level can really go very down. And naturally, it's not like you don't want to forgive. Some people, once you know that somebody has bridge on you, they, they, there's something that dies. That sparkling can just die. And this sparkling, if you don't have God, you cannot be able to resurrect it. So sometimes we, we actually face situations that it's so demanding and there is nothing you can do to help yourself. So we must be very wise. That's why I always said, if you read my choice, I talk about going to know history of the man you are dating. Go and find out. Don't be swept away by love. Don't be carried and lost in it. Find out. Find out how many wives the father, the mother, the children, all this. What is their family value? How do they see family? How do they see marriage? Do they see it as something that, oh, it's by the way? Or do they have very value on it? You see, find out. Don't just assume. If he brings people to you, go tell him, yes, I, it's good. Go and make your own investigation. If you do these things, you will save yourself and the children a lot of stress problems. May God help us to, to, to overcome people who are really, really very slimy in character. You know, they are very subtle. Guys, please type your question again. The earlier chat disappeared. Yes, I think so. Mama, does God recognize, I don't know, is it traditional marriage? Sure. The first time we saw an open diary in the, in the scripture was when David and Abraham went to pay diary. They didn't take the diary to the church. They took it to the family of the girl. Traditional marriage is well honored by God. Church marriage is also you showing your place of worship because the union has to receive also your minist the ministry's blessing. It's, it's you showing recognition. Okay, for me, traditional, church, and government. Government and church, they partner to do theirs because even if you go to church, they will still give you government certificate, assuring that in this church, you were wedded under this act of the government. So they, they are all important. You cannot take, hear me this, you can marry a woman traditionally and go for a church blessing. 
without doing celebration if you don't have the money. But you cannot go to church for blessing without paying dowry. You are a thief. The church does not own the child. The church are mentoring the child to spiritual growth. They are not the biological parent of the child. So you can not by court traditional marriage for Christian wedding. No. If you don't have enough money to carry out the two, from where I come, we even do the two one day. Your parents come around, they receive all the diary, everything is done in the morning. By 12, you're already in the church. One reception. You use one stone to keep two bed. Then you going to church to show off to the society and your parent has not received a penny. That's, that's wrong. You can't ignore traditional marriage for court marriage. You go to the court and sign. So disrespecting. You must go to the grassroots. Your parents. They, 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 if they don't bring you to this world, you won't even have a court to go to. They are the first. And that's what we also saw in the Bible. Another question as we push forward. Mama is mama in a situation where someone's spouse is dead. Is it okay to get married to that person? If yes, is deliverance needed? No. Depending on the family. If someone's spouse is dead, is a legal ground. If you are available and you are willing to get married, to get married to the person. The only thing you need to find out what led to the death, what happens after he died or she died, how have you been living, are you Christians, were you Muslims, were you this, you know, get the details so that you know where you are starting from. If there are things that need to be adjusted, maybe shifting home, doing this and that, you do that just to make sure that you, you don't encroach. I see some women who wears their late husband's wife's clothes. I don't buy such idea. Why wear her clothes? Let her family take the clothes and give it to who they want to give. Wearing her clothes is afflicting somebody else with pain. You don't know how it feels for the family to see you wearing the wife's clothes. So you only get rid of some certain things that is not needed. And if need be, change home if it is not a permanent home. So that at least the children, the, the, the you know, the, there is something about psychological mentality and balancing. You must try to, if you can't change home, maybe it's a permanent home, do some repenting, you know, just to bring out another something different. But not going to deliverance when there is no need for it. Mama, if a woman is rejected, by the, fam the man's family before the wedding, should she still go ahead and marry him if the marriage is blessed in the church? Before you get to the point going to the church for marriage, you must have agreed with the family of the boy and the family of the girl on your mutual transaction of becoming a family partners. If paraventure, you had a situation maybe during your bride price or before the bride price there was an issue of castigating or wrong information and because of that they choose now to resist the marriage and probably the date has been fixed everything has already been fixed if you are able to talk to your pastors to go talk to the family and try to understand what is their grievance what is the problem? How can the problem be solved? If they are saying that the problem is they have information that you are evil, you can kill their child, you can do this and this by word of mouth with no evidence. You see, that, is, that becomes malicious and jealousy. Evidence has to prove their facts. 
if they don't have evidence to prove their facts, now the church can say, okay, two of you decide and come back to us. Because they cannot finalize and say, just ignore your, you will now go back and say, we have, as a church, we visited the family. And the fact they are giving to us, there is no evidence to back it up. And you cannot use the word of mouth to hinder a couple who you had supported to the point of diary has been paid and now you want to call up everything because of someone who is not willing to bring out a concrete evidence. And we all know we live in a wicked world. That is now when the church and you and the spouse can take a decision. Them helping you. But it is not good for the church to just, except you did not communicate to the church or they didn't know what is happening within the environment. If they get to know, it is good for them to interact with both parties. At least to find a way to resolve if it is resolvable, if it is a demand and you people are able to meet that demand, it is being met so that the marriage can be binded in a more peaceful manner. So that's the best I can advise for now. Mama, if someone was born in a polygamous family, automatically he becomes the corporate of that altar. How can you break from that altar of polygamy? How to break from it is take a decision yourself. That no matter what, you will not rush to make sex relationship a priority. Because the problem you make sex relationship a priority, you might end up getting a woman you are not ready for. And before you know it, you will not want to settle with that woman. You will want another woman. You are already towing the same road. If you see danger in polygamy, first altar is your deal with yourself. Tell yourself, I will be responsible in relationship. I will not date because of sex. I will date because I want to settle. We choose, sit down to choose. Get a proper woman by God confirmation helping you. Then you will be able to at least minimize, protect yourself from not repeating the same cycle. Because the moment you open yourself with carelessness, I can assure you, you will end up because the spirit that is in it is strong. It will compel you. It will propel you to push you into the dark polygamy. If you are not spiritually and a disciplined person, you might end up being worse than your parents. So you must take a lot of responsibility to resist it. My goodness. I like the questions. I like the questions. It's helping us to get more clarity. Mama, is the age of a partner an issue to consider for a successful marriage? Yes. If the man is too old than you, he treats you like his daughter. So if he treats you like his daughter, you know you don't want to be a daughter. You want to have the privilege of a wife. It becomes a challenge. If the guy is too young, you, you murder him. And he doesn't want a mother, he already have. He wants a wife. So age also have a way of making us to speak to each other with a tone that might suggest oppression, intimidation, and maltreatment. So don't allow the age to be too aged. Also sexual activeness. If your man is too old and you are in, a, in that vibrant time, surely, <laughs> even if you want to kill him, his bone is not willing to cooperate. So you must check, check. This, the age is number, but there is a reason why it was there to guide us. Health, a, a woman of, a man of 70 years, you think he can be doing <laughs> some things you, you, a girl of 20 years is looking for. Even if he does it, you know, it is with limitation because his waist can fail him. 
His spinal cord can remove from position. Not to talk of other parts of his body, which probably he's already sick and so many other things that can come in. So age consideration is also good. If you are the same age, maybe two years, three years, me, I can say the highest, 10 years. Now when you have, you pass one decade, you see now you are in a different technology with that man. When you are speaking, yeah, he's speaking, no. He doesn't understand you. It's like millennium children and children before millennium. You see, you, even to train them is difficult. The digital children is difficult. They want the things we don't, we didn't know. The cartoons they mentioned, we didn't watch it. Our cartoons were, even me, I didn't think we, we didn't watch cartoons. We watched all those silly mans. But you see now our children, they were sometimes, the, the ones for a certain age, they were watching Tom and Jerry and Barney and friends. Now, <laughs> they are Power Rangers, they are what, what, mind, mind, Minecraft, what, many of them. Gede gede baruza taya badoza, maso koto boro boro boza gada gada. Reba zegede gada baruza tala braze gede gede. Okay, ah, uh, mama, what is the meaning when married women wear anklets? Because people usually say it has a deep meaning. You see now, if you go to the brothel to pick a wife or you pick a spoilt girl or a girl in a high society kind of life to become your wife that is part of their outfit they feel good wearing it whether they are married they don't care they see it as part of outfits if you are with that kind of a woman you deal with it that's where she's coming from. But is it good? No. You are not a slave. When we saw it in the Bible, it was talking about slavery. And also, lesbianism. They wear it as a, as a way of identifying themselves. As a way of identifying themselves. Most clubbers, prostitutes, they wear it as a way of identifying themselves. I have never seen a lawyer or a doctor with an anklet. I don't know, maybe you have seen. So you see that it is not in a professional costume. But in that costume of those people who like Yopi, you know, they want to be here, they are socializing with life, they are wearing it. So if you are smart enough to pick them as wife, you will deal with their ankle, anklets. But it is not something a Christian should desire to wear. Because in the Bible, in Isaiah, it was stipulated as a harlot outfit. And it was for slavery. So there is no need. Why do you want to wear a slave costume? Put on a very good gold, 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 gold uh, uh, crown instead of wearing such thing. Then I take the last question. Mama, some traditional marriage rituals can be evil. How can we avoid this 
rituals. If not, I didn't see the other side about them. Okay, uh, uh, what you do before you get married, you, they, they, you need to find out what are the things that are done in that place. And those things that are done, are they Christian culture or are they their traditional culture? If they are traditional culture and you can convert to money so that you don't expose yourself into going to shrines, altars, and do that, because it is not you that is taking it. It is them that are demanding it from you. You see? So that you won't also have a problem with them thinking that you are trying to come and give them a rule while you are in their own territory. So what you do, if you have someone who is smart, they can help you to re -go out of it. It is only when you don't have people who are with you that these people take full force advantage on you. So you must have people who can help you to, to dialogue, to speak before, before. Not on that very day you start showing attitude, no. Before, find out. And see how you can find somebody to stop you from getting into those rituals that you really can see that this one is like you people are being binded with a tree. That's how you you are very careful to escape from them. I don't know if there is any question from YouTube, from Facebook, but if there is none, it's okay. I want, if you are a newcomer, kindly please subscribe like it and share to others god bless you don't forget tomorrow is our family um, uh, rescue service and on thursday we have kingdom secrets don't miss them god bless you may your family be preserved next week we are going to be talking about when god choose a, a partner for you Will your marriage have issue or not? Many people have asked that question. If God choose a partner for me, is my marriage supposed to be successful or fail? By next week, Tuesday, we are going to look at it. What happens when God gives you a confirmation that Mr. A is your husband, Mr. B is your wife? Is that marriage supposed to fail is that marriage supposed to succeed? Stay tuned for you to know. Information is power. And it will help you to make a better decision. Shalom.